Will Goldstein here. Subject to this video is the cross, Christ, repentance, and the pursuit of perfection. So this is sort of a preparatory um, place to kind of settle in for someone who desires uh, to be a Christian and to pursue uh, the Christian life and maybe from a beginning standpoint or somewhere in the middle, uh, you know, but to move forward um, and toward a more serious endeavor, even towards uh, eventually towards a, a, a bit of a mystical path as well. But this, this is a preparatory sort of place to begin, the ladder of ascent, shall we say. Um, so it's mostly dealing with catharsis. Um, so uh, it's like the building blocks of the faith. So, uh, first of all, we have to kind of um, understand the state of uh, our soul, and, and the state of our soul is continuously changing. Like the Greeks, you know, the, <laughs> we're in a state of, that's one of the things that always amazes them, we're in a state of constant flux. Um, every moment is a new moment, and uh, it's never the same. We're always changing. So, um, so it's understanding the justice of God, and there's some of this in another video that I did, but it's just a little brief recap. So understanding the justice of God in our fallen nature. So till we, there's nowhere to go if we can't if you can't agree on that and settle in on the um, Christian uh, belief system and the way they feel about that. So God is just simply holy, just, righteous, and um, you can't just overlook sin. And we have a fallen nature, and that goes all the way back to Adam and the Garden of Eden. But the idea is every human being, as to some degree, is, is definitely fallen. So they, we all have the potential for sin. There's not, none righteous, no, not one. So, and if a person can't accept that, 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 the, that he or she is a sinner, then there's nowhere to go. Because... Um, they're not being faith. They're not being honest. So right off the bat, you know. <laughs> so in this path, absolute sincerity and honesty is required. Otherwise, it's all over. So, um, so basically, so um, understanding who Christ is, and there's some other videos on that. Who Christ is, and Christ is. Um, Basically, the word, the logos, uh, that is basically for anyone concerned, Christ is the is the face of God, and and the mouth of God, and um, that's who He is, and that's who He was on this earth, and um, and the ultimate judgment of sin. So there's an accountability. So we have to understand if you if you don't think there's a God, and you don't think there's any kind of accountability, you're not going to stand before God. Then game over. So, but if you understand that there is a God and he, he is going to seek an account of your life, then um, this may, video may be helpful. <laughs> so this is a ju judgment, or at least an accounting of sin. So um, we need a Savior and the recognition of our fallen nature. So once a person accepts Christ, and that would be through the a sinner's prayer, and I gave that in another video, um, and invite, inviting Christ into your life, um, then um, you're seeking the power of the Holy Spirit to assist you. So, um, and the first thing, becoming a Christian needs to be from day one, or as close to day one as possible, understanding the need for repentance. So, you know, like in the, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, a voice crying in the wilderness, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So it's not just get saved, it's repent, and be saved. So in other words, there has to be an acknowledgement that if you really want to be on a spiritual journey with God, that, that you're going to turn from your sin, and that you're going to repent. Now, repentance can be a lifelong process. There's, everyone will agree on that. So, But the idea is that you're always striving after repentance and always seeking to lead the better life and to change um, basically your habits and, and things like that. So... Um, the, the Holy Spirit is there to help you. So seeking, once, so once once you invite Christ, do the sinner's prayer, invite Christ into your life, then the Holy Spirit is available to you. So if you're asking the Holy Spirit to help you, then you can commune with the Holy Spirit. And that brings us to the, coming up to the process of uh, prayer. 
But anyway, anyway, I think we understand the purification, catharsis and purification are the same thing. Some other words that you might think about in relation to that are cleansing, purgation. So purgation means removing. So you're cleansing, you're getting rid of bad stuff in your life. You're getting rid of the evil of your, your life, the bad habits that you have. And then eventually uh, the peace that will come as that happens and the relief that comes uh, when that purgation takes place and your life is more focused on God. And that, and that can be in marriage or whatever, in family. It's, it, it's not a, it doesn't have to be a single thing. You can be a mystic and be married and have a whole family, you know. So, I mean, I was. <laughs> um, so anyway, so some positives. So then the next thing to think about is what are you doing with your time? So um, uh, my mother used to say, <laughs> You know, and I don't mind is the devil's playground. And when I was a youth, believe me, it was the devil's playground. So, um, yeah, so what are you doing with your with your time? So, so time is just ticking away, and it's going to be there regardless. So the best thing to do is to build positive habits to fill up that time and to reduce and get rid of negative habits so that and replace those negative habits with positive habits. So some positive habits that you could start doing, reading the Bible, uh, learning about God and, and God's nature, his attributes, you know, study books on, even though, hey, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a degree in, <laughs> I'm on this right here, but I just read a lot of the Bible and a lot about philosophy and mysticism and all, all that kind of stuff, and that, that's why I'm on here, but I don't have any degree, I have a degree in music, but not in, uh, not in this, but I have read an extensive amount, and um, probably a lot more than a lot of pastors, as, or some pastors at least, have, have read. Plus, I, I put the New Testament to music, <laughs> a lot of it at least, to, to music, um, which it was thousands and thousands of hours, many thousands. So, um, anyway, reading the Bible, learning about God, his, his nature, his attributes, uh, learning about love, and this is the path of love, of righteousness, good, doing good, doing the right things, understanding good and evil, and God is a good God. And then, you know, once you, you're on that path and you're trying to steer away from the temptation to go down evil paths, then there you get to prayer and there's different types of prayer and understanding those praise and adoration and blessings that you can do, uh, prayers of contrition, um, you know, your remorse for sin, sorry for sin, asking forgiveness, repentance, um, deciding to do your best to change your bad habits and uh, turn over a new leaf and prayers of thanksgiving and gratitude because God has saved you and come into your life and working in your life and transforming you into a better person. Prayers of petition for other people, for yourself, for, for intercession for other people and prayers for yourself and for your spiritual growth. And so those are all prayers that involve thought. So that's... Um, and communication, and that's the rational side of spirituality. But there's also a mystical side of spirituality, which I'm only going to briefly touch on because not much happens in that realm until the first realm happens. But the, a little bit of taste of this is the other side, which is a good idea once you become a Christian, is to start thinking about this. Is you know, there's silence is another form of prayer, just simply silence and stillness and listening awareness of paying attention to where your thoughts are going and maybe directing your thoughts to a more positive place and maybe seeing the Holy Spirit is there as a shield against negative thoughts to remove those negative thoughts and redirect them to a more positive place. Um, uh, prayer of the heart, so that would be something where instead of just doing reciting spoken words and prayers, you're actually praying your own feelings and your own expressions and you're just kind of unleashing towards God. He can, he can take it. So you're just telling God and communicating with God on and off throughout the day, the, the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner, or even just saying the name Jesus. Those, all these things start to, do, to develop uh, a path towards a more mystical nature. Uh, you're, so what you're basically doing is you're trying to maintain constant communion with the divine presence. 
So your your the idea is your when you're not busy doing something else that you have to do, your eye your mind is fixed on Christ. Okay. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is fixed on thee. Um. So. Yeah, and so uh, along with that, there's we need to make sure that we're getting the purgation part of it, if, you know, the purification process is is the removal of the negative. So, bad, what bad habits um, do you have? And also, that could be in lots of things. For example, you know your health. You know how I, I mean, I drink a little wine and or a beer every once in a while, but I, I don't get drunk. Um, your health, whether your weight, taking care of your body, what kind of food do you... I happen to be a vegetarian. I'm not saying everybody should be a vegetarian, but I happen to be a vegetarian. But um, And I ate a lot, mostly all... 90% fruits and or 95 fruits, vegetables. If it doesn't grow in the ground on a tree, I mostly don't eat it. Um, so health and, and so... Avoiding so then when you're t sometimes you're just tired and you want to relax, you know It's okay to watch a movie or something, but what kind of movie are you watching? I mean if there's a, there's a lot of sexual stuff in it or a lot of violence in it This is not going to help you um, With sex a lot of sex scenes and things like that. That is not going to help you on your spiritual journey <laughs> It's just going to lead you down into the devil's playground and who knows what you'll be doing after that so so but you know and the, the good habits are, like I said, our prayer and things like that. But, you know, playing music, uh, listening to music, these are positive things. Educational reading, spiritual reading, learning about things. Um, the arts, anything in the arts. Like I have paintings around on these walls. I do art sometime when I'm not doing music. Uh, Bible studies, attending Bible studies and support groups, having friends, participating in ministries. There's all kinds of ministries that you can get involved in and spend your time doing something to help other people. So, um, you know, the Matthew, so this is, all this is a preparation towards, on the, like, degrees of perfection of going up the ascender, the ascending the ladder of, of toward, toward God's spiritual ladder. So, I'm going to read you Matthew 5, 4, 48. Therefore, you are to be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. So, what is the spiritual journey? It's right there. You are to be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, the reality of that is, you know, that's what we strive for. The reality of that is everyone, on end, no matter how advanced they are spiritually, is always going to admit that this side of heaven, they are never going to reach absolute perfection. But Christ is the model. Christ is who you set your sights on. That's who you're modeling your life after. So, um, so there's degrees of perfection. So that's basically, and so as years, the idea is that as years go by, months and years go by, you should see yourself becoming more and more. If that's not happening, then was it, you know, maybe you should ask yourself, was this a real conversion? Did you really convert to the faith? And sometimes people just kind of make a conversion and um, they stagnate for most of their life, maybe, because they just can't. If you're going up a ladder, and like anything, you can't really ascend up the ladder until you take care of some of the lower stuff. So if you're still dealing 10 years later, or 15 or 20 years later, with the same stems back at the beginning, well, then you're not making a whole lot of progress. So, we, so that's why some people make progress quickly, and some people is very slowly. So... Um, yeah, so, you know, we always, and when we do fail, we need to understand that God is a for, forgiving God, and when we confess our sins and acknowledge the sin that we have in our heart that we've done and ask for his, for forgiveness and strive towards repentance, God is a merciful God, and he is willing to forgive us and to continuously work with He's not going to abandon you. If you are calling out and you are trusting in God, I will never forsake you. So he's not going to forsake you. A lot of people will say, you know, I even had a friend say, you know, I committed a sin against the Holy Spirit. You know, God is not going to forsake you. But this is the path that leads towards uh, eventual illumination, theoria, which is the second step. Um, when and so, the, but the first step is is the path that I just said. I hope this is helpful to you. And if you if you like these videos, subscribe.